Let's look at the chat features of the Google Palm API. In the last tutorial, I created a file called basic.py and then we tested the text generation abilities of the Palm API. We created some code to generate some text, for example, the list of countries, and we even generated some Python code. I showed you how to process the response and how to understand what it contains by using the correct attributes. In this video, we're going to look at the chat feature. I have a file called chat.py and the first thing is to import the Google Generative AI package. Then you need to import the OS library in Python because we need to access the API key as an environment variable. So again, you're going to write Palm and then you use the configure method and you pass your API key to this parameter. Next, we need to initiate the conversation. So I'm going to write palm.chats and this chats method accepts a string of text that we can pass to this messages parameter. This is what we are passing as a string to this chat method and it's going to generate a response which I'm going to store inside of this variable called response. If I try to print the response, I'm going to get a lot of contents. And that's what it looks like. I'm going to drag this up so that you can see better. It says chat response and it contains a lot of values. First, it shows us which model we are using. So we are using the model called chat bison 001. And then we don't have any context for now, but in future videos, I'm going to show you how you can specify a context. We have no examples, but for messages here, we have an object like a JSON object and it says author and the ID here is zero and the content is high. So this corresponds to what we passed here. So the first author value is our own value. Then when we get a response, the author switches to one and the content is high. How can I help you today? For the temperature, it says to none. And for candidates, you see that the data is similar to messages. We'll get to that in future videos. And we don't have any filters for now. If I want to get the response from this API and ignore all the extraneous data, I can come here and say response.last. And this will give me the last output of the API as the string response. So let me clear this. My terminal is empty. So I'm going to run this file again. And now I get the clean response. It says, hi, how can I help you today? So now I can update the value for my response by providing a reply and storing it back into my response variable. So here I'm saying response, which is the chat response that we got. And I'm calling the reply method on that object there. Now I'm going to ask, what's the time in Sydney? This is going to give me an output, which I can print again in my terminal. So to do this, I can use response.last one more time. So I'm going to paste it here and run my file and let's see what we get. So we get the two responses. Here at first, our last message was the first reply from the API. And then when we printed again the last response, we got the last response from the API. The time in Sydney is currently 10.24 a.m. We can also decide to print the entire conversation as a small history of our chat content. And for this, I'm going to comment out my print statements here. And I'm going to have only one line here that says print the response dot messages. Messages is holding all the responses, including our questions or whatever we prompted the, the chat bots. It's going to print everything in one shot. So let's clear the terminal. And now when I run this file, I should get the two responses at the same time, including what we prompted the, the chatbot. So here it says the author zero. At first, this is us. We are saying hi. Then author one is responding. Then author zero again, we are asking another question. And then here we get our response, which is the time in Sydney. So again, we want to print this in proper formats. So let's write a for loop to filter out the content that we want. I'm going to come here at the top and I'm going to paste a piece of code here. So here I'm accessing the data inside of response.messages. And for every message that I'm referring to as MSG, I can print it first. Let me comment this out and rather activate this line of code. Now I'm going to run this file 
and you should see our responses and the questions in better formats. So at first, we are getting this here in one block. It corresponds to line 13 when we print all the messages. And then here we have a cleaner format because now we are printing every message inside of response.messages on its own line. So what if we wanted to extract the content there and display it like what we would get in ChatGPT or any other chatbots? So that is where I'm gonna comment out these print messages and the one at the top. And at first, I'm gonna access the ID of the author. So I'm turning this into an integer. And then here I'm saying, if the value is a one or three and so on, then it means it's an odd number, which tells us that it's a response because we are the first ones to interact. And if it's an even number, then I want to refer to that author as me. Now, if you think about it, it's not necessary to write it like this because the IDs are zeros and one. So this here assumes that we have many authors. In this tutorial, we are not having a conversation in group with multiple authors. So instead of saying, if the number is an odd number, I can say, if num is one, then I want to refer to that author as the API. Otherwise, the author is me. Now here, I'm going to print me, then my question, and then API, and then the response. So here I'm using the format method, and the first thing I'm printing here is either API or me. And here is the actual contents of the message. So let's clear this. And now I'm gonna run this file. And now we have our interaction printed just like you will see in a customer care chat window. So we have the author and then the message. And this is much easier to understand than what we had previously. Now, there will be times when you'll want to use apostrophes inside of your contents. I'm going to show you how you can add quote marks inside of your messages. So I have a piece of code here. I'm first going to comment out my for loop. And now I'm going to enable this first line of code. So I have palm.chat and here I have, how's it going? So notice that because I want to add this apostrophe, I'm using double quotation marks at the beginning and the end of my string. If I used single quotation marks, then I would run into some issues. And you can see here how the colors have changed and we even have an error right here. So that's one way to do it. Let me run this file and we shouldn't have any error. And here you see, we run the file, there was no error, but we didn't get any outputs because I'm not printing the last response that we had from the API. I'm just asking a question and then I quit. So now let's try for the second method that you can use if you want to add quotation marks. So here, unlike in the first line, I'm using single quotation marks, but I also have this escape character. This escape character turns it into a string character. So if I remove this, now I have an error. If I add it back, then it counts as part of my string here. So again, I'm gonna run this file and we didn't have any issue. So that's how you can add quotation marks in your strings or whatever you prompt the chat API. In the next short video, we're gonna look at how you can create your own inputs as in from the user to provide some inputs and pass it to the Google Palm API for your response. So this is in the next tutorial. Stay tuned and please subscribe to this channel. I'll catch you in the next video.